I'm a bit late with this video, but I'm very happy to be making it. Today we'll be looking at the Sonos ERA 300 smart speaker. We're mainly looking at how it performs when used as surrounds with a Sonos Arc soundbar and a Gen 3 Sonos sub, but I'll also discuss a little bit about its performance on its own and while in a stereo pair. The Sonos ERA 300 is a product that I literally wished for almost two years ago. This leads me into my first wish item from Sonos, which is a speaker very similar to the Sonos One SL, but with both a front firing and upward firing driver. It's honestly pretty cool to see that they finally made this speaker and it made me even happier to experience how well it performs, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Starting off, the design of the ERA 300 is a bit unique and I'd be lying if I said that this is exactly how I imagined that it would look. It has this hourglass-ish shaped design where the front and back are wider than the middle section. And as always, it's available in white and black, which is a Sonos standard. The very front has a grill, then the back section has a grill going all the way around, minus the very back section where it connects to power. The ERA 300 has six Class D digital amplifiers that are specifically tuned for each driver in the speaker. It has two woofers located on the left and right sides and four tweeters in total. One on the front facing forwards, one on both sides firing outwards, and one facing upwards for height channels of audio or 3D spatial music. On the back, there's a switch to disable or enable the microphone, a USB-C port, and a Bluetooth pairing button. It's extremely refreshing to say that they're finally including Bluetooth capabilities on their new smart speakers. Yes, Wi-Fi audio streaming is better, but having the option to use Bluetooth is a big plus. The USB-C port can serve multiple functions. You can use a USB-C to line in slash auxiliary adapter to play audio directly through the speaker with a cable, or you can use Sonos's combo adapter, which has an ethernet port and auxiliary port, both of which are sold separately, of course. Now, this honestly seems like an Apple move though, where they're requiring you to use an adapter of some sort to get any function out of this USB-C port. Why not just include an auxiliary port and ethernet port on the speaker itself? but I digress. The ERA 300 has plenty of wireless options such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, AirPlay 2, Alexa and voice control, and of course the Sonos app. I want to note though, if you're using them as surrounds, both the line-in and Bluetooth capabilities will be disabled. They will work while in a stereo pair though. On the top, you'll find a touch capacitive volume slider and touch capacitive pause slash play, previous and next buttons as well. The volume slider looks great and is very responsive. It's a nice touch. And the last notable feature is TruePlay. TruePlay measures the acoustics of a room, then automatically tunes the EQ of the speakers to improve how they perform in that specific room layout. There are a few caveats though. There's now a quick tuning method that uses the built-in microphones on the ERA 300 to tune itself rather than using your mobile device. So for those who don't have any compatible iOS devices in their household, you can use quick tuning to get some form of true play tuning. However, and this is very annoying to me, quick tuning is only available when using the ERA 300 by itself. You can't use this method if it's in a stereo pair or used as surround speakers. So if you plan on using them as surround speakers like I have, then you'll need an iOS device to do the advanced tuning process, which is a bummer. Yes, I know. The setup process for the ERA 300 is no different from any other Sonos product. It's super quick and simple whether you're connecting a single speaker, doing a stereo pair, or setting them up as surrounds. It should automatically pop up in the Sonos app and you'll simply follow the on-screen instructions. Now the setup process slightly differs depending on how you plan on using them. If it detects two of them, after you set up the first, it will ask you if you want to do a stereo pair. If you're looking to use them as surrounds, Rounds, you'll need to have the Sonos product they will be used with already set up. And for instance, that's my Sonos Arc. And there will be an option to add surround speakers in there. I really don't wanna to spend too much time talking about this because it kind of feels a bit repetitive, honestly. The setup process for all Sonos products is honestly fantastic. And I think most people are gonna find it pretty easy to navigate. But there are a few things that I do want to mention. I always run the TruePlay tuning process after I get everything connected and in the place that it's going to sit and stay permanently. As I mentioned earlier, as long as you have an iOS device, you can easily run through the advanced tuning process. I'll typically toggle it off and on just to see how it changes the performance of the system. And it's always a bit better when I have TruePlay on. Nothing has really changed much here. Now on to what most people really came here for. How do the ERA 300 speakers perform when used as surround speakers with the Sonos Arc soundbar 
and a Gen 3 Sonos sub? The short answer is very, very well. Listening to this system brought me back to when I tested and reviewed the Sonos 5s as surround speakers. The amount of immersion and surround audio you get is genuinely incredible, except the Eero 300s are quite a bit better with the 3D audio than the 5s, which is to be expected, honestly. The Sonos 5 speaker directs most of the audio forwards, while the Eero 300 directs the audio forwards to the sides and upward. This makes the audio feel much wider and taller, giving it many more spatial audio capabilities than its predecessor. In the medium-sized room that I tested in, I hardly noticed any breaks in the sound when it was transitioning from the front to the sides and from the sides to the back of the room. It's extremely seamless, which helps immerse you into whatever you're watching a bit more. Now, the Eero 300 doesn't have the most amazing frequency response out there. It's good, but definitely not the best. Ratings tests say that it can play as low as 40.6 hertz and as high as 15.8 kilohertz. So as long as you're using at least a Sono Sub or Sub Mini with it, you shouldn't be missing out on any of the lower end frequencies. I tested this entire system with quite a few different Dolby Atmos test videos and Dolby Atmos movies to get a good feel for how it performs overall. There's an Atmos test called Leaf that has a leaf falling through the air with lots of surround audio tracing. And even when it's off screen, you know exactly where it's at. And of course, you know I had to watch some Ford versus Ferrari as well. And man oh man, did it give me goosebumps numerous times throughout watching the movie. All of the racing scenes are incredible, but I like the scene where Shelby takes Mr. Ford on a test ride. Right before that, as they're speaking, you can hear all the details of a car shop with the clanking of metal, people talking, etc. Then you get the experience of multiple shots of the car going extremely fast, making hard turns, all from inside of the car and in the third person. It's a great scene that I frequently use throughout testing different systems. Sonos has truly done a great job with the Era 300s, and they pair perfectly with the Sonos Arc and Gen 3 Sub. I would recommend these over the fives as surround speakers any day of the week. Now, in terms of pairing the Era 300s as surrounds, I would only recommend doing this with the Sonos Arc, not with the Sonos Beam. You're going to miss out on the wider sound imaging and 3D immersion because the Beam doesn't have any speakers firing upwards, and it doesn't play audio to the sides nearly as well either. The Aero 300s are going to pair much nicer with the Arc because it has way more power behind it, while the Beam is going to sound good, but not give you that you know theater level experience that you might be hoping for. Sonos has always been heavy into music. Now, after all, that's where they got their start. And this system sounds incredible with music, especially if the tracks are lossless and support Dolby Atmos as well. I used Apple Music for a lot of my testing here. If you are unaware, there is such a thing as Dolby Atmos for movies and TV shows, and a different form of Dolby Atmos for music. I made a very detailed video on this quite a while back. Listening to Dolby Atmos compatible music with this system is such a joy. I love the subtle height and surround effects, as well as the noticeable ad libs or background vocals coming from the surrounds as well. The entire system seems to have a good range in my opinion, and I really enjoyed messing around with it. The mixture between the front and back is solid, and nothing sounds over or underpowered to me at any point. One thing that I thought was pretty odd is that you can't get Dolby Atmos music when playing through AirPlay. Bluetooth doesn't support the amount of bandwidth needed, but I was especially surprised to see that it didn't work with AirPlay. In order to get Dolby Atmos music, you must play the track directly from the Sonos S2 app, which means you need to connect your Apple Music, Tidal, or whatever music service you use for Atmos music to the S2 app first, then you play it from the Sonos app itself. And to be honest, there's a pretty substantial difference between Dolby Atmos music and normal music on the system. Normal music sounds good, but the Dolby Atmos tracks are gonna sound far better in my opinion. I still like that you can modify how the surrounds reproduce music. You can choose either ambient mode or full mode. In ambient mode, they will play quiet and subtle sounds, but in full mode, they will play the full range of audio, just like the soundbar's playing. I prefer full over ambient mode and then turning the, the surround levels down just a bit, but Dolby Atmos blows both of these out of the water. And if the music you're playing is Dolby Atmos compatible, then it's gonna automatically override this setting regardless, which is very convenient. Also, a pro tip here. When playing any sort of content, whether it's music or movies, uh, if you tap the center icon at the bottom and select the room that you're listening in, and it'll tell you if it's Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital Plus, or whatever with a different icon. Other creators have covered a way where you can watch movies and TV shows with a stereo pair of Era 300s. There are two different ways that you can do this. You can use an Apple TV 4K or another media device that allows audio output through AirPlay. Many allow video slash audio streaming to the device, but not out from it. 
That's why I'm being very specific here. Now from that media devices menu, you can search for AirPlay devices and select the ERA 300 stereo pair as the audio device. Additionally, you can use the USB-C to line an adapter to connect them with an auxiliary cable to your TV or media device. This is probably gonna be the better option so you don't experience any audio sync issues while watching movies or TV. Who knows though, it might work perfectly fine doing it through AirPlay. I didn't test this much because that wasn't the main focus of this video. I don't foresee a lot of people doing this when it's going to limit your movies to just a left and a right channel of audio. The height channels won't work anymore, you won't have a dedicated center channel for better dialogue, and it's probably just not the best idea. I don't think it's really what these speakers were intended for. Now, if Sonos were to create a USB-C to HDMI adapter where you could use HDMI arc with a stereo pair that would allow for more channels to go through than just the left and right but honestly I don't really foresee that happening here it might but it's just unlikely now I say all of that with movies and TV shows being the main focus if your main focus is music then go for it a stereo pair of these speakers with spatial audio is incredible for listening to music. You definitely won't be disappointed. The Aero 300 is pricey, but not the most expensive speaker out there. It comes in at 449 USD. For this entire system, which includes a Sonos Arc soundbar, Gen 3 sub, and two Aero 300s, you can get it for as low as $2,471 with a bundle discount. If you were to purchase pieces individually over time, you're looking at $2,596. This ain't cheap at all, and that's a huge price tag compared to what else is out there on the market. But is it worth it? Well, that's really for you to say. What I like about Sonos compared to other soundbar manufacturers is the modularity of Sonos products and how well they maintain their value. You can buy the Sonos Arc now and add a sub or surround speakers later on. If a new soundbar comes out, after you have this entire system, you could upgrade to the newer soundbar and continue using the sub and era 300s as surrounds and so on and so forth. Sonos also doesn't offer massive discounts on their products, even if they are a bit older. You may see them slightly on sale like once or twice a year, but it's nothing crazy. For example, a Samsung HWQ950A system, which was $1,800 two years ago when it was released, can be bought now new for $950. It's also a complete system, so you can't upgrade any components or add anything new to it. If you were to sell this on the used market, then you'd be lucky to get half of what you paid for. But Sonos's products tend to hold their value for much longer because their prices don't decrease rapidly year over year. Hope that makes sense. I know that may not be a huge selling factor for many of you, but I wanted to mention it because I think it's important to know. When thinking about if it's worth it to you, try to keep in mind what you value most. Do you want a set system that doesn't change until you're done using it and need to get rid of it? Or do you want something that you can add, modify, and upgrade over the years? We'll likely get continuous updates and improvements over time, etc. These are really important questions to ask. For myself, having the Sonos Arc and Sub already may the Aero 300s an easy no-brainer purchase. And yes, I did buy these myself. If I were starting from scratch, it would have been hard to justify spending $2,500 on a completely new system. If you're hesitant, I would suggest starting with the Sonos Arc and see how you like that. Then consider adding a Sonos Sub or Aero 300s as surrounds. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.